Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Dennis. Welcome to Patina Code. This is So You Want to Build an AD. I'm cold right now. I'm done. Come on. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dennis, and thank you for tuning in for this edition of So You Want to Build an AD, powered by LS Fabrication. And today we are working on the cab corners, and I'm a little dusty here. We are, you know, we ran into some things. We knew that it was going to be there because the truck had already had some surgery performed on it from the previous owner, and, you know, they used a lot of Bondo to fill in the parts of the truck that they were trying to mask from where they had been working and there's actual quarter inch thick pieces and sections of bondo that have knocked out of this truck and what i'm trying to do is just get everything back together to where when it's my time to apply some of the filler <laughs> we won't have to apply that much we're gonna have to apply some but we're not gonna be coating it way past the working point of that body fill so Got back here and there's a couple sections that we had to cut out and repair. You know that we removed the bottom section of the cab corner so that we could gain access to the inner cab corner, which is essential for keeping debris and dirt out of the vehicle. So once we did that and we got those installed, now we have everything done on the outside of the truck and that's what was left to do was install that cab corner back on each side of the truck. So we got that done and there's one little spot that I got to show you. You can see how gnarly this is back here. Uh, it, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a mess. So we're going to be cutting that out and just applying a new piece of metal and getting all that taken care of and getting things back together and straight enough for us to work with and have a usable vehicle once again. So we're doing good. We're making good progress in my opinion. And so we're just going to get into this and then see where else we go from there. So looking down the door and this is just mocked up. I don't have the hinges in, but you look down the door and you see how the cab corner where it was once replaced and we whacked this off to gain access to the inner cab corner, but you can see how this protrudes. So we need to figure out how to get back to this line. Everything is cool up until right about there. It starts to protrude out. So we need to figure out how we're gonna get this moved in to follow this line. And then when we attach the rest of the section of the cab corner will be able to follow true with the line of the truck. So I need to figure out something here. So I've removed the door and from my best guess, first off, you're going to see these holes here from where metal tapping screws were in. They installed the cab corners to hold this end in place with metal tapping screws. And sometimes people will do that to hold panels in place, but then they never finished. So we backed out the metal tapping screws and you can see they were a little rambunctious they got into it there there's another spot here they gouged into the lower b pillar here but from my best guess in order to get this to move inbound we're going to have to take this flange here and move it inbound because that's what would make this protrude there's no other reason so that's what we're going to do we're going to get baby Thor out and then just start moving this bottom part all the way down we're going to move that lip inbound because it is protruding you can see I don't know if you can see from the camera but it is it's protruding out and it shouldn't be pushed that far out so first we're going to get the body hammer and just tap on it see if we can get something going and then if not we'll step up to the baby sledge baby Thor so after a bit of tussling, we've got our door on and done a little beating and we've almost got the protrusion gone. It's just a slight bit. Let me get over there where you can see it good enough. It's just a hair. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. And as you travel up the door, the line looks 
pretty decent. And our belt lines match up. We got to get this right because once we go into the whole paint and body aspect of this, you know, you don't want to be rubbing the door up against the quarter here and the cow. You know, you don't want to scuff it up. As you can see, we've done. But this would be where it would go. And you got to remember, there's a seal that is going to be back here. So it's going to push the door out just a little bit. And then that will even this out. But it looks good like that as well. Well, this was our main point of concern down here. And you can see there's just a little bit of this part of the cab corner protruding this way. Not enough to really make a difference. As I said, we're going to put a seal on there and that's going to bump the door out a hair, maybe about like that, you know, so it's going to be pretty darn close. I think we can live with that. And then we're going to get up here where the gap gets tighter and we're going to hammer this back that way. You can see where they've done their body work so we're going to straighten that out and i might get back here and just push this a little bit more forward just to see if i can and then from that point we'll get the lower cab corner piece and put it on and keep along with the flow of this door because this is going to be the door that we're going to use on our truck it is a actual 1947 door from an old 1947 pickup truck that I built years back. And we ended up finding some doors that were in better shape. And to say that, these doors are in great shape. But at the time, you know, this is right after I came out of my C10 building stage. And I could weld a little bit, but as far as doing little spot welds to do that and then clean them up with the little discs, I didn't have all the proper tools. So I was like, you know what? We'll find a good set of doors. So that's what I did. I found a good set of doors for the 47 that I was building. And then we stripped them down and got them straightened out. There was also the issue with up here in the pillar part. This is wavy, but back then I wasn't too familiar on how to fix things up. Now I know how, so I'm confident that we can get this straightened out and looking good. But for right now, we got some uh, pretty good progress with that cab corner. These are pretty neat. I don't know exactly what year these are from. And why I say that is because I'm going to do something pretty cool with these pieces. They've been on here for I don't know how long, but the chrome is held up and it's not pitted. So I got an idea for something that we can use with these. And uh, I think it's going to be pretty trick. Here we are with our replacement cab corner. Uh, again, this was new when the previous owner I put it on. I had to cut it off because we needed to put the inner cab corners on. They didn't do that, and it's useless without the inner cab corners. There's just no point. You'll still have debris and stuff getting up into the truck. So we're going to do a little bit of trimming. Uh, I cut it a little wonky, but it's going to go back just like a puzzle piece. But I've cut off the edge here. There's a flange that mates to the inside of the pillar. I had to cut that back because it just wasn't right but we can reinstall that but we have it trimmed to fit and go on the bottom here where it belongs and it's going to made up pretty nice and we're going to get it lined up to the door so we're going to put a couple spot welds on it and get it just tacked in heavy to where we can manipulate and move it to get it to fit and flow and go around the back side of the truck and connect and then we will move to the other side. And once we get the other cab corner on, we will pull the doors back off and I'll get these welded in pretty solid. And then we're gonna have to flip the cab over so that we can spot weld the bottoms of these to the bottom lip of the inner cab corner as they should be. So I'm gonna make this up to this. You guys can get a look at how it's gonna go. The important thing is to stay true with our gapping for our door and also the bottom of this cab corner is touching the underside of 
the inner cab corner, which is important. I just mentioned we got to weld that together. So we're going to have it fit right there and it's going to trail our line and keep our gap and I'm pretty satisfied with that. So right now, the next thing I need to do is get that put up there, get a couple magnets, a couple clamps, and then spot weld it here. And then we'll work on building out the flange that will bolt. I'm sorry, not bolt, but weld to this inner lip here of this lower B pillar of the truck. The first two initial tacks are in and it might be hard to tell from the camera. We still have just that little bit of protrusion, which it's gonna be minor because I believe once the seals on there, the door will come out and it'll be okay. But what we do have is like, it's going kind of in and then it comes back out. So it's going straight and then it kind of goes back, then it comes back. How we're gonna alleviate that, I've been manipulating and moving this. I took the welds I had on off and tried to redo it and I still keep coming up with the same result. So what we're gonna have to do is take a piece of sheet metal and then simply just blend this to build this gap to close it to bring it more so this way we're going to take a piece of sheet metal and stick there and there where essentially the low spot is weld it in grind everything flush and it'll alleviate just that little dip and it's minor i'm and you know what once i get everything done and welded up solid i might not even mess with it because unless i tell you you wouldn't even notice it you know <laughs> but it looks pretty good, but yeah, you can see, you see right there how it just, just slightly bows back a little bit. So once I get it all together, we'll, we'll see, but we got the first part of it done. So now it's just going to be the point of going all the way around, manipulating the panel here and getting it joined back up to the rest of the truck. Give you guys an overall look of what we got so far and my style of building is a little unorthodox. I will weld a seam, then grind it back to a point, and then still have the rest of the way to go. But I do that so that I can keep track of where I'm at and what I've got to do after everything is done. But this is turning out pretty good, but you can see we're gonna have to go back and you know, just some spots, you know, and then get everything ground down smooth with the die grinder and the disc to level everything, but we're making pretty good progress around the truck. We have everything lined up. We just need to sew it all together. And when that's done, we can go to the other side. But the main thing that I was concerned with was getting this area here to be how it is. It's looking pretty good. And we just have a slight protrusion in this area. And as I mentioned before, it kind of dips back just a hair. And that's not a big deal. Cause as I said before, we're gonna put piece of sheet metal in there to build this up bring it outward and then that will give the appearance of the line being completely straight and i mean if you're just looking at it i mean hell like hell that's good and it is so you know we're gonna keep going we got to work our way around and then come back and use the die grinder to flatten down the welds and that's the thing though you have to be careful when grinding the welds and all that stuff down. For one, you don't want to get them too thin. Two, you don't want to get the metal too thin because anytime you see sparks, you see metal leaving. So we're just gonna level this and make it good enough to where when we go to put the smear coat of Bondo on, it'll just be a nice smooth transition and the cab corners and everything will still be solid. A Couple hours later, here we are with our cab corner on the truck. You can see where our I was working. We have a little bit of a, a little ridge there. Not a big deal because we're gonna be smearing on some Bondo. It looks pretty good here. We still have our nice form. It's not welded, spot welded to the bottom of the end of cab corner. That's what we're getting ready to work on. But before I get into that, I wanna show you this. While I was back here working my way around the cab corner, I ran into this tomfoolery. Look at that. That is way past the point of usable Bondo. And I cleaned it up to this point. I'm gonna have to take it all the way off as I was anyway, but they 
they did nothing here. They just used Bondo as if it was like glue. But we have the section of the cab corner that was cut out back on. I'm going to finish removing all the Bondo once we get the cab corner spot welded to the inner cab corner. So I put the inner cab corner on. It's going to be hard for me to show you this up underneath. But we have our little baby body clamp holding this in place. And this here is the port of power. I had to push the inner cab corner back this way in order to meet up with this inner piece. So this is where we're gonna drill the holes to spot weld the back side of the outer cab corner to the inner cab corner. And then it'll be okay once we flip the truck over to spot weld the bottom portion of the outer cab corner to the lower portion of the inner cab corner. So just a little bit of extra things we had to do. I'm glad uh, we have the port of power here. It's come in handy many times. It's saved me a bunch of times over the years. And I'm just glad that I have one. I actually have two of them. One heavy, one light one. And uh, it works good for moving things when you don't need to beat on things. So we've got some progress done with that. I'm gonna get under there, I'm gonna crawl underneath and make sure that it's pushed all the way up the way I want it to be. And then I'm gonna drill some holes and spot weld and get that all tightened up. And you guys know me by now, I'm spot weld crazy. <laughs> kind of dig into the secondary panel there but yeah man sometimes i mean it's overkill with me i, I spot weld stuff a little overly done but that's why my shit don't fall apart <laughs> so we're going to start down here get that filled in We just have to hit this spot down here at the bottom once we get the cab flipped over and clean that up better once the cab is away from the chassis. So we're doing good. We're going to remove the port of power and we got that cab corner secure. That thing's solid. This thing's going to be a tank, man. <laughs> you guys to look at that that's a quarter of an inch piece of bondo and it was spread across from this point where they welded in the new cab corner down to here and over because there was a dent here and they were just trying to level everything back out i left some of the remnants so you guys could see you know but that's not going to work for me. That's just entirely too much. That's way past the usable point of that tool, you know, of this filler. It's not designed to be put in that thick. And it, it will do just like what happened. I was on the inside pushing because the dent was right here. Real deep dent. And I was on the inside with the rubber mallet beating it to push it out. And you got it squared up pretty good. Just a little bit. It might beat on it just a little bit more. It might even get the port of power out and just... Put the rubber ball back here on the other side and push it out. But at any rate, that just fell out for me beating. So you got to imagine hitting a bump 
it's going to crack, 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 and then your paint starts falling out, you know, and then go down the road one day and there you have just a mess. And that would be hard to notice because the bulkhead of the bed is right there against the truck. So you wouldn't know it until it starts rusting out sometime down the road. But we're going to take care of that. And while I was beating, we beat out what they were trying to conceal. And what we're going to do right now is just get up here into the good part of metal because this is pretty thin from where they were welding on the other side. So we're going to get up here in the high good metal, cut it, and then cut down. And we know this is good metal because this is actually from here to the bottom. That was the cab corner piece, you know, that they put in. And anyway, we're going to cut it, stay in the good metal, get in some good metal here, and then just cut a square and try to fix that up. So that's what we're about to do right now. We will go back and I'll finish removing this that's left of the bondo. I just left that there for you guys to see, you know, and the truck overall, it looked good at the start, you know, but, and I knew it had filler in it, but I didn't know it was that much. And why this is all distorted and messed up is because the bracing, there's three braces that run down. Well, they welded that brace here and they used, I don't know what they used. Either, either they used a stick welder or they had the welder turned up too high and they, you know, burned through and warped up the metal. But anyway, we're gonna cut this out and just see what we can do. I'll admit we cut out a pretty healthy section of this truck, but I want to make sure we were in good metal the whole way for when we put our patch piece back in here. And I had to be really careful because like I said, that bracing is running through here and we didn't want to cut into that. We already have enough damage, so what we need to do is get this removed and then just make us a patch and clean off the rest of this and then just get it welded in. It's pretty cut and dry, actually. So what we've run into on the other side is you see they've put this little strap here. And that was to add a backing to what they did here. Now, normally, you know, if the cab corner wasn't good, like if someone... You know, it was a new cab corner. If the cab corner wasn't any good, then I would just buy the patch panel cab corner and it would be the entire piece and then we would just fix it. But all this here is still solid. That's ugly as hell. All this that is there that they've done. But we're gonna cover it with Fondo and fix it up. So I see no need to take it out. But now we gotta get all these heavy welds off of the strapping here, off of this brace, and get it off here so that we can remove that little piece of metal and then add us a new piece in. And I did what I didn't want to do. I cut into <laughs> the brace. <laughs> we'll fix it up though. Okay, well, we got that out. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm kind of upset with myself that I cut through the cab bracing there, but I, you know, that's what happened. So now we need to clean up the bracing, get it smooth back here. That way we can apply our new piece of patch panel and then spot weld that to the bracing. And that's gonna do it for this edition of So You Wanna Build an AD? <laughs> But I'm give you a sneak peek, an advanced look at where we are currently with this truck compared to as where we are at this point in the video. And as you can see here, we have our sound ending in. And we come around to this side. We have started the process of smearing the filler, the bondo. And we're gonna have to get that scaled down. But right now it's just on there and we're just gonna help. You know, 
get the sandpaper out, get the DA out, and get this all smoothed out and formed and worked around this cap corner and get it all straightened out. I appreciate you guys checking out these videos, leaving your comments, giving me your thoughts on what's going on here at Patina Code. And if you're not already, check out the podcast. Patina Code presents Stay With Me, and it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Podbean for you non-Apple users. And it's just uh, myself and guests having fun. Anybody's welcome to be on the podcast. If you wish to be on the podcast, just shoot me a message and we'll get up a time and date. and We'll shoot that podcast and get it put on there, man. Also, for those of you who are building an AD, check out LS Fabrication. They have a ton of stuff for the Advanced Design Chevrolet. You can use Patina Code's promo code Patina Code at checkout on LS Fabrication's website to get all sheet metal panel products made by LS Fabrication. And like I've always been saying for this whole time, that's a good start to customizing your vehicle and making it that of your own. They have a lot of other things that I can't help you out on, but to get 10% off the sheet metal panel products, I mean, that's pretty decent, man. That's pretty decent. Before we get out of here, I want to thank Joe's Racing Products and Champion Cooling Systems. I'm Dennis for Patina Code. This has been So You Want to Build an AD. Thanks for watching. Stay with me. Step aside and put right behind us.